Hello, this is Mighty Owl. Ah, listen to the sound of the river. Isn't it relaxing? But the water flowing in the river is doing more than just creating a peaceful picnic area. It's actually making big changes to the earth around it, even the riverbed. You might be thinking, no way, that's not possible. Well, it might not be easy to see it now, but day after day, the water is making very small changes to the rocks, to the sand, and the mud. And that, mighty scientists, is called weathering. And I'm not talking about the weather outside, like being sunny or rainy. Weathering is when wind or water breaks apart or changes rocks, like what's happening in this river. The rocks are getting smoother and smaller because the water is slowly breaking them down. Oh, but that's not the end, though. Sometimes those smaller bits of rock are swept away and moved somewhere else entirely by the water and the wind. And that is called erosion. In this river, weathering and erosion work as a mighty team to change this riverbed and the land around it. In fact, weathering and erosion shapes our land in many different ways. So let's take a look at a few amazing examples. Wow! Look at these magnificent formations. If you look close enough, you can even start to see patterns or shapes. Ooh, I see a seahorse. Now this is an incredible example of the big changes that water can make to a landform. It's hard to imagine that nothing but water created these beautiful tunnels and passages, but it's true. It took thousands of years for this sandstone rock to be carved out by the rushing waters of the Colorado River. Flash floods, which are sudden floods caused by intense rain, wore down the rock and carried bits away. That is weathering making changes to the rock. The water then moved those pieces of rocks away, and that's erosion. And little by little, these events drastically changed the way that the canyon looked. But this is just one really cool example of how weathering and erosion work together to change the land and create new beautiful landforms. Have you ever been caught in a big wave? Well, it's easy to feel how powerful the water is when we're at the beach. Now just look at these waves crashing into the shore. Imagine the ways that the ocean water is changing the land. Wave after wave crashes into the shoreline and breaks up rocks along the water. And that's how rocky beaches turn into sandy beaches. Now it does take millions of years, but if you're patient enough, you'll see this beach turn into a nice and sandy one. Wow, look at that. This landform definitely earned its name, the Grand Canyon. From the top, it looks like the cliffs go on forever. Uh, but actually, way down there is the Colorado River. And how do you think that river got way down there when we're all the way up here? Yep, you guessed it. More weathering and erosion. The river broke down and carried rock pieces away. And this went on for over 5 million years. Over that time, the river path became deeper and deeper into the ground. And today, it's over 6,000 feet deep. Just imagine that. 5 million years. That's a lot of time for weathering and erosion to transform a place. But it sure is beautiful to think that it was formed just by flowing water. And if you think that's incredible, let me tell you about something even more astonishing. Frozen water can also cause weathering and erosion. Glaciers are huge pieces of ice and snow, and these massive blocks of ice slowly move across the land. As they scrape across the earth, they break away bits of rock from the landscape, and sometimes they can even move boulders that are the size of a house. As they slowly move, glaciers can carve out lakes and valleys in the land. It's like they're pushing the land out of the way. How cool is that? Now, it might be hard to imagine, but wind can also cause weathering. Yeah, that's right. The wind can cause little bits of rock to break off of larger rocks on a mountain. Think of it like tiny crumbs falling off of a cake. The wind and water sweep those crumbs away and bring them to a new location. 
And all of this over many years leads to changes in landforms. And some of them are really kind of funny. Look at this mushroom rock. Pretty funny, huh? Well, this is the result of wind erosion. They get their name because, well, yeah, you guessed it. They resemble the shape of a mushroom. Now, these unique landforms usually form in hot, dry areas like a desert. Wind can also cause sand dunes, which are piles or hills of sand. And in Arizona, we have the beautiful wave. This stunning sandstone landform was created by both wind and water erosion. The perfect combination for the perfect landscape. Winds pushed the sand into dunes, which hardened over time. And water then stepped in and started to carry away bits of the sand, which formed the wave-like shapes. So not only does weathering and erosion make changes to the landscape, sometimes they even make a masterpiece. Wind and water are mighty forces in our environment, and they can make big changes. Whether it's a giant glacier scraping across the rock and dirt, a river's rushing water carving out a grand canyon, the waves of the ocean, or even wind creating mushroom rocks, Water and wind are great at weathering and eroding the land. And since you've got a few million years to wait for those sandy beaches to form, what do you say you check out the next video lesson? Until next time, mighty scientists!